I've got my yoga. You know, uh, I'm, I'm really happy. stress today than there was in the 60s and that's why we need to apply the relaxation to learn Whoa. introduced to yoga from when I was a really young child and then also she had that television show Relaxing with Ryan which I can remember even seeing on TV before I even started school so yoga was always with me and I would often whenever Ryan was teaching near us often we would go and, and practice with her in quite large auditoriums I can remember and halls so yoga had just always been with me probably one of the best things from it. I mean obviously when you're young and you're flexible you do it and I was just talking about headstands and things which I haven't attempted to get in recent times but um, I think the main thing too was actually the shavasana and so I learned to relax from when I was quite young and even have that's really stayed with me always so that in particular in terms of my yoga practice it's come and gone and in recent years it's been more gone <laughs> than here and then actually at um, Roma's Wake when I met Mary Louise I got back in touch with um, a yoga teacher then and had some private lessons to get me back um, and so I've been trying to it's been a bit of a slow journey life gets into the way um, and then most recently I did a retreat last August and um, ever since then I've been pretty well practicing every day just trying to do 20 minutes and then um, and then starting classes again so it's slowly. Hello I'm Roma Blair and I'd like to invite you to wake up and live with me and if you do just that you're going to find that you're going to be a lot healthier you're going to be very content and you're going to learn with your mind and your body how to use that body. Now the most important thing in yoga is the breathing, but remember that yoga is not just a set of exercises or standing on your head. It's a way of life. And that's why you have to wake up and live. Never try to go into the advanced postures. Always start warming your body first. Second is
recent yoga journey and then been going to a few different classes and just thinking about the IYTA and I, I don't know, it was, I just I feel even more proud of her now when I think about it, how she started it. You know, it was quite a, quite a, it would have been quite a challenge to be doing something like that in those days in the 1960s in particular. So, oh, um, so yeah, wow. and to start building wow. something that now that's grown so well and it's lovely that it's continued to grow and is still going so strong and that she started that. So, um, and the Swamis, I do actually remember when she was uh, actually at Rose Bay and going over and meeting them. I was in awe. I was a young child then, but I didn't, it was like, <laughs> it was something quite different. <laughs> Uh, Fernie Gilbert, um, past president for uh, many years. I think, Fernie, you were on the first formal teacher training course. We came to live here in 1971 from Melbourne and I was going to Joy Spencer's class, just started in Baldwin, and then I said we're moving to Sydney. And she said, if you're going to live on the North Shore, I suggest you go to Sally Jansen's Triad Yoga School, which I duly did. And at that time, 1973 was the first teacher training course and she used to chat on quite a lot about the association itself, yeah. IYTA. And as like everybody else, we, our little group said, where do we go to learn more about yoga? And she said, oh, well, girls, go and do the course. And we said, oh, <laughs> shock horror. <laughs> yes, yeah. It was Pat Gray, Shirley Breer, Betty Fitzell, oh, Mary yes. Butters, you know, all those people and me. And we said, oh, well, we'll just go and do the course. And it, and it was only about 12 in the course. Right. Okay. So we all learned the course. And we really only went to learn more about yoga. Never ever, like you were saying, never ever intending to teach. But duly, we all, having done the course, the answer was, well, having learned the course, you can't waste all that talent. And we all need new teachers. And like Dorothy Potter and all these people were saying, haven't had a holiday for two years, you know, please do my course. So off we went and all started teaching. Oh, Vi Fraubrach, thank you so very much for talking with me today. Vi has been a member of the IYTA for so many years and uh, brought many students to the teacher training course. Yes. And I know her passion um, has been for prenatal yoga and was really at the forefront of bringing prenatal classes uh, into Sydney. So Vi, yes. can you tell me how you came to yoga? Well, I was going to general yoga classes for a number of years as I had five, four children and yoga was my time for myself, a way to get away and go sitting in the group and someone wanted a yoga teacher and I said, well, I am going to do the teacher training course, but I'm not teaching just yet. I did the teacher training course that year, which is 1978. That must have been one of the very early uh, teacher training courses. Yes, it? yes. It was run by Sally Jansen and Amuna used to teach there as well. And there was another lady, Anne Sharpen, the main teachers when I was teaching. I did my course in 78-79 oh, right. and uh, it was very professional then so I think a lot of hard work had already got into it by those rather early days when I did the teacher training course. I'd say now Margaret, what does, what does that mean? What, what does it mean? she tell me and then this went on for years, oh, like what, right. explain this, what this, she said okay. I'm exhausted from this. Why don't you go and do the IYTA course? And I said, oh no, I don't want to teach. I just want to learn what, what's, so I can pick up a magazine. And she says, no, I'm not, I've really had this. <laughs> <laughs> I really do need to take it another step. And she said, I and only the IYTA will be able to provide all these answers that you're driving me mad with. She said, well, I just think you better go and do it because you're driving me mad. And I did, and um, she dropped me right in it, like you went, oh, she was not yeah. come. Rang me up, like, I've got half an hour's in it, Kate, you have to teach tonight, can't do it, did I? <gasps> Complete panic. Not me, not me. <laughs> Complete, she said, you teach school all day, it's no different. Well, it's a bit different. <laughs> Thank you very much, Beryl Broad.
Bent from Cairns in North Queensland and Beryl was the, um, the representative for North Queensland for several years and Beryl has been a very long-term member of the IYTA. So thank you very much Beryl for talking to us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your yoga journey? Well my yoga journey started I think when I was about eight or nine and found what I presume to be a book that my grandfather got coming out from England to India, uh, coming out from India, England to Australia and stopping in India. And it had lots of drawings and things in it. And I can remember reading the book and saying to my grandmother that, oh, I can do that. Oh, but that one's yucky. That's where I think my yoga journey began. When I was very young, but then I was always interested in those sorts of things. And after I'd had my fourth son, there was an ad in the paper for yoga classes. And I thought, yes, I'm going to go to those. So that's when I started proper yoga, te a yoga training in Townsville in about 1975. Can you tell us um, who some of the mentors have been for you in your yoga journey? In my yoga journey, I think the most prominent one would be Dr. Oki. Right. Um, when he came to Australia to the first Canberra convention, and again, my memory, I think it might have been 1979, he made a very big impression on me by the fact that yoga did not have to be serious. Right. It could be seriously funny. Right. And we had the best time. It was the best time we ever had. Yes, I, I really enjoyed that convention. You mentioned um, several of the teachers who came together to form the um, IYTA mm. and were very um, uh, so important in establishing the teacher training course. Uh, yes, they were all my, my teachers. Um, Anne Sharpen, uh, Dorothy Potter, and Janet Harrowell. And Janet Harrowell was um, probably the person most influential on me in that after Yoga for Children, which I thought was a fast stretch, you know, those things we go outside our comfort zone yes. to do yeah. that grow us. But immediately after doing that, she said, well, you know, Dorothy's not able to do her lectures. Will you take over for her? It's one of the special things about the IYTA tradition, the ego, but it's about the student. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that, you know, the, the passion behind the teaching is the caring of the student and the transmission that you know you just you want others to have what yeah. you've enjoyed <laughs> yeah. yes. and you want to share that yeah. um so yes i do so very often it's through our shadow parts that we meet our greatest freedom I used to go to a teacher in uh, Chatswood, uh, that was Ruth Hubert. She was Swiss and uh, she ran a health shop. She had a health shop in Chatswood in those days and there weren't many health shops around. I think she was one of the few. So she used to encourage me to learn more about yoga. She had a lovely library full of books and, and she'd say, you know, you're one of the few people who come who are really interested in the subject of yoga and, and one day she said to me look there's a, a talk on by a psychiatrist that was from Sydney Uni now I can't even remember his name and in those days this was probably the late 70s um, and he was going to talk about meditation as a healing tool for people that were very sick so we went to this and it was actually put on by the IYTA at the end of the session, I said, look, we're having a teacher training course 
And if there's any teachers here who have students that would be interested, it will be starting at that date. And Ruth turned to me and she said, now, she was very German Swiss. And she said, <laughs> you will do that. I love the philosophy of the IYTA because they were accepting of all forms of yoga yes. and there wasn't one path and one way. It was really the subject and uh, that was why I, I thought, oh, I really want to do that. I have no intention of teaching, none whatsoever. I don't want to teach, but I just want to learn more about what yoga is. So that's why I joined and then here we are, you know, how many, 30 something years after, <laughs> still teaching. <laughs> so much Ursula Hoover for speaking with me today. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you first came to, to yoga classes? But when I came to Australia, I finally found out I should go to yoga classes. And this is where I started. This was in the early 60s. And um, there was a lady called Mrs. Segeman in Melbourne. She was quite well known. And she was the first yoga teacher and inspired me that one should not look to any spiritual things initially, just do your practice. It helped me a lot to get in touch with the system of yoga and the versatility of it. been the important teachers in, in your life, Linda? Well, that one was just a guy working at the Needham College in Fondo. And he was doing the most amazing postures and he was almost like a leopard or a cheetah and he was slinking about on the stage and really enjoying himself and he had this cheesy grin on his face. And then I met Kitty Finger, another IYTA teacher. I was meant to go to that house and I went to her classes and I stayed with her for three or four years. And she actually used to laugh at me when I was doing the postures and I didn't know why she was laughing. And she said, oh, you've done it all before. You should do your teacher training. What? <laughs> I thought about being a yoga teacher. It's the best thing I've ever done. Uh, Mori Earls, uh, yoga teacher from the South Coast, uh, very respected and has uh, um, made a big commitment to the IYTA as a committee of management and vice president for some years. Uh, Maureen, would you like to tell us um, how, how, how did you come to yoga? One day in the Herald, Sydney Morning Herald, I saw a little ad for some courses at Sydney University uh, during the summer vacation. And uh, for no good reason, because I didn't know what I was doing, I uh, chose a six weeks course in yoga. Michael Volin, one of the original teachers, uh, was taking the club. I uh, then looked for a, a, a class that I could do. I found a class in a little church hall at Wollstonecraft. Moira Forbes was the teacher there. She was a, an IYTA teacher and uh, a lovely lady and uh, I joined that class. Uh, what the IY, IYTA course, one of the many good things it did for me was it taught me how to teach in a community setting. I uh, very much enjoyed the uh, IYTA course. It so happened that uh, Acharya had been teaching asana, pranayama and a few other segments there for some years when I joined the IYTA course. That was, so I graduated from there in 1990-1991 course and um, uh, the handbook at the time uh, for Asana was uh, this, this handbook, original handbook, printed in 1984, put together in collaboration with um, Acharya and uh, Amuna Metcalf. Uh, Jan, oh, could you tell us how you first came to yoga? Well, actually, um, I had never heard of yoga before. Um, when I uh, my sister introduced me to yoga and so I went along to some yoga classes with her and uh, I thought this is this is quite interesting right. um, and then um, one day they asked, we did all you had to do all these relaxation at the end of the class and I thought my goodness I don't like this part of it <laughs> 
until I started to think about why I didn't like it and realise how much tension I had within me. It was showing me that I was holding so much tension. And um, when I realised that, I, that hooked me into yoga. Fantastic. Because it was teaching me something about myself. And um, what did you enjoy most about the teacher training course? Um, I think it helped me to become more a confident person within myself, mm -hmm. to get to know myself and, to, and um, to realise that you're capable of doing things that you didn't realise you, you could do, like mm -hmm. teaching, <laughs> teaching yoga. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, uh, meeting so many wonderful people through it too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ever when did you do your teacher training? 88, 88 or 9. Finished. Uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. That was the year after me. And I think that was, I uh, saw a change in the teacher training, wasn't I, it? Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, even the way um, that the, the whole thing was organised um, with your assignments and um, everything was quite, a, they were trying to try new things. Um, and then, of course, Moina Bauer, she was the convener of the teacher training course. Um, and I think she had fresh new ideas as well. So, yes, it was, it was beginning to become quite different. And uh, who were your mentors? Well, I have one sitting here right on yes. my left. Yes. Swami Daddy's <laughs> <laughs> um, She was my favourite pupil. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much Rosemary Pearson and Janet Stevens for talking with me today. If I may start with you Rosemary, um, tell us about your uh, yoga journey. Well it started somewhat later in life than would have been advisable but uh, one of my daughters started me with yoga and then I found the lovely teacher Karen Chapman uh, when I was studying the Alexander Technique. And Karen is a teacher of both these things and in fact still teaching in Queensland with the Back Care School. And I was inspired by Karen when one day she said to me, Rosemary, why don't you do the teacher training course? And it was a bit of who me, but I, I went on and did it to my great delight and joy. And you came to teaching perhaps later in, in, in your life? Yes, not till 1991. Fantastic. Uh, when I did the course, it, we're still running at Greenwich and Moina Bar was very efficiently running the course there. We had quite a, quite a big crowd, I can't tell you now how many, but it was a very enjoyable experience. And as since now I'm still working with the teacher training committee, I'm really interested in the fact that in those days we were making little audio, little cassette tapes and sending them to the correspondence students. And I know at least one of the teachers teaching on the course now did by correspondence her course using the cassette tapes. Right. And from cassette tapes, we moved on and we had CDs. And that was such a step forward yes. and so, so, so we're so proud of ourselves yes, yes. until of course we moved on to DVDs. <laughs> Fantastic. And of course that was a great thing. There were the, Correspondent students could still see uh, what was going on, which was a you know, great step forward. But of course now, with the current courses, we're using video and correspondent students can feel really part of the course that's going on. And I, I just think to trace that is so, so much tracing IYTA that has been able to move and change with the times. Karen, can you tell us a little bit about your yoga journey. How did you first come to yoga classes? I think um, yoga was like a, a, a need, a survival. Uh, <laughs> because I had just had my first child and um, I used to be very active playing squash and things like that beforehand. And I found all the sports sort of sapped the energy. And I went with a girlfriend to class and I found that yoga rejuvenated and conserved my energy. I decided to do the teacher training. Um, and so that was over 90 and 91. And uh, that was a, a wonderful thing meeting other like-minded people from a variety of backgrounds who also wanted to, to do this. If I may, I'll perhaps go to you now, Patricia. Um, 
when, when did you tell us about your yoga journey? Ah, well, probably like everybody else in yoga journey, I'm not quite sure where it began, but I could sort of put my finger on one particular thing which aroused my curiosity. When I was in my teens, I found a book by um, a Belgian yoga teacher, mm -hmm. um, Andre van oh, Lisbeth. 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 Yes. Yes. I took it into my room, I took it over yes. and uh, used to practice little bits and pieces from it. And so that was in my teens. What, which year did you do the teacher training class, Patricia? Okay, well, I had no, like Wendy, I had no intention of teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I want to know more about, yes. you know, what's, what's behind all these lovely teachings that um, Matthew used to talk about. So I, I started the class. Uh, the, the session in 1991, so I joined the 1991 group. Uh, so, Jibran, can you tell us uh, about your yoga journey? How did you come to your to yoga classes? Well, I was uh, reflecting on that, and I went to Jill Waller's yoga classes, which were local in the Annandale area at that time, or close by. And Jill was a wonderful teacher. She eventually became the Vice President of the IYTA when Wendy Batchelor was the President. So Jill was very encouraging and also uh, during my yoga practice she would get me to demonstrate some poses in class which was really wonderful. Yes. You know it was great practice for myself. Then I went down to a yoga conference in Canberra mm -hmm. and I met up with Elsa Rabold, yes, who influenced so many yes. people Wonderful day. and she had so much vitality and energy and was so mischievous and I thought well when I get to her age I really want to be like Elsa you know to have such enthusiasm mm -hmm. for life so I think Elsa was the person that really made me think about yoga teacher training and Jill encouraged me. So that's when I decided to do the IYTA training course. Janet, let's tell, tell us a little bit about your story yes. in yoga. How did I come to yoga? I was living in Singapore at that time in 1989 and I was introduced to yoga by a IYTA teacher who did the IYTA correspondence course and she was a great, uh, she was a dear friend and a great yoga teacher and she encouraged me on my, the start of my yoga journey um, and sadly I wasn't very long in Singapore and after a few months there we relocated to Sydney and yoga then had a big impact on my life, particularly after I discovered to have a breast cancer. And that was the turning point in my life. And I, and yoga was the anchor uh, that kept me afloat and nurtured and nourished me during that difficult initial period of accepting the disease and coming to terms with it. And my teacher then in Sydney was Margaret North. Oh, I started with teacher. Margaret North. Yes, yeah. And then and met uh, several teachers through her. Um, Donna Fari was an amazing influence. She encouraged me to take up the teacher training course. Fantastic. As did Kay Crow of the IYTA. Yes, New South Wales State Rep for a long time. Oh, Again, a fabulous teacher, yes. Right. Yeah. yes. Thank you so much, Moira Pearson, for talking with us today. Moira, you've just completed the teacher training course? Yes, I completed the teacher training course just in 2016. Oh, fantastic. And actually last Saturday was just our graduation dinner. Oh, how lovely. A lot of fun. Can you tell me about um, what were the outstanding aspects of the course for you? Well, I think um, attention to detail mm -hmm. and safety, mm -hmm. the experience that is behind the IYTA diploma uh, of yoga teaching training is amazing. Like we have teachers that have been um, teaching more than my whole life, uh, 30 plus years, and I don't think you can get that in any other course. Um, one of the 
the teachers that really uh, impacted me was um, David, the pranayama meditation teacher, of course, and also Astrid Picot. She's so energetic and uh, positive. As you exhale, gently lunge. As you inhale, straighten the leg. As you exhale, arms down. And it's as simple as that. 